Hey guys, it's Daryl here. It is uh, Happy Wednesday. It's, it's 4.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. The reason I am smiling is because I'm kind of nervous. I don't know if I should even make this video. All right. Uh, I was just looking over. I was going back. I, I wasn't going to make a video, and I was trying to catch up on my comments, the comments from you guys to, to talk, you know, to... to Thank you for your comments. Read all your comments and everything. And I came across the video I made of Giuliani in, in an adult bookstore looking through the hole, the glory hole. And I started thinking about this. And, you know, this isn't going to be quite a typical political video. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, it made me start thinking. And I want to share the thought with you guys. All right. Now, some of you may not know what I was talking about, or I, I don't know how many people know what a glory hole is, and I'm going to tell you how I first learned of what these are. Uh, okay, I, I started out, I went to a tech school for drafting, architectural drafting, then I, I got a degree, and then I went back again for uh, uh, electrical and mechanical engineering, got a, got a certificate in that. I did architectural drafting for uh, about five years for two different architects. I had started using drugs during that period, cocaine and whatnot, and uh, it got worse and worse. I got laid off, but they knew I was uh, having problems. It was in my early 20s. I was one of the first guys in these firms, uh, the youngest, one of the youngest guys. Uh, I was working guys with guys from Yale, from Harvard. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and they, they knew I was having problems with substance abuse and... Uh, you know, I guess you got to lose to know how to win, in the words of Steven Tyler one more time. But anyway, I ended up driving a truck. Uh, and it was a great job. Uh, I was driving for Teamsters. I was delivering magazines for a news company. All, every, name, every magazine you could name, paperback books, newspapers. And some of the stores I would deliver to, deliver to some days I, I would deliver to just adult bookstores in Connecticut. I would deliver all their... Uh, adult magazines. Um, when I went into these stores, there was usually only one guy working, and he would have me. You know, this was common practice. He, you know, I'd bring the stuff in in a hand truck, and he'd direct me to the back room to to drop off the drop off the old magazine and pick up the boxes with the uh, returns. And I would go through the arcade. It's called now. These are booths, single booths, where uh, usually usually it's guys. But I have seen it. it. It is a weird place, man. Uh, if anybody's never been in these places, they're dark. They're very, there's usually questionable looking people hanging around, usually guys, usually men. And you get a weird vibe right off the bat that, that <clears throat> people are staring at you. Uh, it's dark. It's maybe sometimes it's lit up by black lights. And there, there, there are some, I, I can't even, some are so bizarre, I don't even want to describe here. Uh, all right, and there's booths where you go in and you, you watch movies. Uh, a, a man or a, or a woman or a cuck. I've seen couples back there, too, that go in and watch adult movies in a booth with a bench. Uh, as I kept delivering, I, see, I saw the booths kind of change into bigger booths that could accommodate a couple or more people. And uh, then I saw some of the booths pop up that had... I, I when I walked by, I noticed there was windows in the booths, and I had to figure out what this was about. So apparently, you can go in these booths and watch a movie, and you can put you can hit a button, and the opaque window all of a sudden becomes clear. So you can then see into the next booth to see whatever that person or persons is doing while watching the video. Uh, this is a whole different world. And I, I, I always wondered how many people know what goes on. And this was happening in every booth. I mean, in every adult bookstore I went to. Um, I remember going to uh, New Jersey, to Atlantic City. And I told the girl I was dating about these, these places then. And I, I, she didn't believe me. And I took her in and showed her. And the same thing happened. The same thing goes on all across the country, I believe in these adult bookstores. Uh, okay, this is, so for those of you that, I assume that some of you don't know what a glory hole is. It's a cutout hole, okay, in between the booths that you can see into the other booth, but it's also about the right size for a, 
appendages <laughs> to fit through. Um, so, okay, so I would deliver to these bookstores at least one day a week. A lot of the other guys would, would kind of refuse. They didn't want to go to these bookstores. I, I'm always interested in seeing how uh, other cultures, other sides of the life. It, it amazes me. Uh, I, I like learning about observing and learning about other cultures and other ways of life, other lifestyles. And it, and I, I'm a tall, big guy. I, some of these guys seemed afraid to go into these places. I, I wasn't afraid or anything like that. Uh, I think, I think, you know, I, I've never had a problem with homosexual people whatsoever. I've had friends that, that some of my best friends, some of, the, some of the best relationships, best conversations I've had were with other with with, with uh, other men that were gay. Like I said, I'm straight. I don't know how that came, I don't know how that sounded, but I, I'm straight. But anyway, so I, I never had a problem going to these places. But I'll be honest with you guys. Um, okay, this is what I'm getting to too with the COVID nineteen thing. I don't know if these stores are still open. I always wondered about. Uh, uh, the, the the safety of these these uh, anonymous interaction areas, you know, as far as the AIDS epidemic, and now with COVID nineteen, I it just occurred to me when I made this video. I don't know. I would assume that all these uh, arcades and these glory holes are now closed because this would be a huge spreader of COVID nineteen that people wouldn't even know about. This is like a a subculture. Um, and again, I don't know, I don't know how much of America knows about what goes on. And it's not just in one town or just one state. It's in all, probably the whole world, uh, the whole country, the whole world. And it's a meeting place for, for gay people, for, for homosexual men. And the other interesting thing I noticed, and this kind of made me feel sad for these people, these guys, a lot of them, I noticed that were professionals and they had rings on, they were married. There were married men back there. And I felt sorry for them that they were, had to live a double life or, or that they chose to live a double life. And when they went to home to their families, their families had no idea what they were doing at lunchtime or whatever at, in these adult bookstores or whatever. And uh, it's just one of those things that when I got clean and sober, I, I was living a double life of drugs, using drugs, not really the sex part, but the drugs. And um, I didn't realize how much of a toll that takes on a person. You know, I thought I was getting away with it. I thought I was smart, savvy, that I could lie, that I could, uh, you know, have two different lives, you know, using drugs and other people I thought didn't know about it. And, uh, you know, I, I was lying to myself and I was lying to everybody else. And I didn't realize the amount of energy that I expent. Uh, you know, it was so hard living that. And now, well, now that I had leave, lead an open and honest life, it is the, the strain on, on, my, on the, your mental conditioning. The, the, it's so much of an easier, enjoyable life not living that deception, you know. So that's what I wanted to talk about anyway. I, for, the, for those of you that don't know what a glory hole is, maybe some of you watched that video. I thought about this. And so I was like, some people have no freaking clue what I'm, what I'm doing, what I'm saying here. It was a reference to Giuliani being stuck in an adult bookstore that was next door. Like uh, Trump got mad at him, you know, so he couldn't get home. And he was uh, working his way to get some change to get bus fare back to D.C., I, I, I assume that 99.9% uh, .9 of the people got it, you know, but I, I really honestly don't know how many people know about glory holes. So I thought I'd fill you in. This, this is a way different video than my usual stuff. So I thought I'd throw it in there. Uh, you know, uh, live and let live, you know. Um, but I, I do worry about the COVID-19 thing. I, I imagine that uh, a lot of these stores have taken uh, the necessary steps not to be transmitting, uh, have conditions that are transmitting the COVID-19 virus in those back rooms anymore, I, I hope. And uh, that's all. So this is your, uh, <laughs> this is uh, your video for today. Uh, I'll, I'll be making another video later, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it.
I'll talk to you guys later.